it's Kellen, and today on Diversified Game, all the way from Nottingham. Yes, you know, when I have a friend from the UK, come on, I have to get my British accent going. I have Piedza <laughs> Don Ziembe, who created Birmingham's first Zimbabwe Fashion Week years ago. And I really think she started that just so she could come out with her own line, Miss Chi. And she's gonna be our guest. She's gonna show us how she started, sustained, and succeeded in business. Chiedze, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. It's an honor. Y yes, yes, thank you for coming on. Now, let people know, you know, your kind of background in fashion. I gave just a little snippet, but there may be a lot more that you could share. Wow, my background in fashion, well, Okay, so I've not gone to school or uni. Um, I didn't study fashion or anything like that, but I think it's innate. My background is actually construction. So I went to uni and yeah, I did quantity surveying, construction, commercial management. And then fashion has always been a passion for me, but more so lingerie. Um, so what I did is about seven years ago, I decided I, I, I you know, I... I'm a curvy woman myself with a big bust. I wanted to do something for me, some lingerie that will fit me and look good and is fit for purpose. So, right, went on, designed my first collection. And to be honest with you, fell flat first year because I was not experienced. I didn't know anything about business. And I thought it was just as simple as waking up one day and just saying, look, I want to design this. And then it just happens. There's so much that goes be um, behind the scenes when you're creating a product that people have got absolutely no idea about. So then from there, I decided to do Zimbabwe Fashion Showcase um, because I realized there's a gap in the market. A lot of people are, a lot of young and new designers are not getting the exposure that, you know, they'd like to get. That's why I then decided to do Zimbabwe Fashion Showcase to give others the platform where they can come and just showcase their stuff to people. Because, you know, once people get to know you, you, you don't know who they're connected to and, you know, things will happen. You just never know. So I, wanna, I wanted to give them that opportunity to showcase that product. So that's basically how it all sort of happened and then um, a few years later I'm back again and I'm doing my Miss Chi and yeah um, I was ready and I just went on and I did it. Well no that's that's awesome so seven years the journey seven years to you know get to where you are now now with that seven years was that an issue of capital? Was it an issue of just kind of figuring it all out of who to use, who not to use? And what do you think on that journey could have made it go a little quicker? Um, it was a mixture of everything, to be honest with you. Um, so knowing who, to, it's, it's difficult, especially now uh, when it comes to lingerie. I always wanted to have my products made in England. Um, I just love the way the English do have their craftsmanship. I just, I've always liked the idea, but I found it's difficult to find seamstresses that are good at what they do and have got the experience. So, and there's a lot of technical stuff that goes behind it. And if you do not have the background in um, designing lingerie, you have to then outsource. And by outsourcing, you have to find you know, different people that do different things. They do grading, they do um, the patterns, they do the sewing, they, it's, it becomes so expensive. And then once you get all that done, you've got your first sort of pattern. You then have to construct the garment. The garment has to be constructed. Then from that, you have to start um, doing fits. All of that is money. So I was just was not aware how much money it actually would cost. And also, just my naivety. I just figured, you know, if I have a couple of products here and I have a website, just because I have a website, everybody's going to know, you know, who, who I am, who Miss Chi is, and everyone is going to come flooding by. <laughs> yeah, trust me. Only seven years ago, I was that naive. But okay, I'll just get the best website and make sure it looks amazing and fancy and everybody will just see it because it's a website. No, there's SEO, there's so much that happens that goes on behind the scenes and it is just 
crazy. Um, I, I just wasn't ready. Yeah, I just wasn't ready then. Well, I got to have you go deeper because somebody right now is where you are then and saying, once my website's finished, I'm going to be a millionaire. And I really <laughs> pray that that happens for that person or persons thinking like that. But can you, you know, say what are the other things that, you know, you needed besides just the website? And you don't have to give the whole laundry list because it's a long list, I'm sure. Yes, it is a very, very long list. But it's a lot of things, social media now, um, you know, for people to come to your website, you really, it's more about social media now. You need to be out there and engaging with people, trying to get your clients. There's a lot of research that you have to go through, you know, when you're finding your right market, your target market. So you've got to pay. You've got to pay for ads. So imagine, okay, so imagine you're not the only person doing lingerie. If you just Googled lingerie in the UK, you would find a whole list. So you have to try and rank and yeah, you have to get people that are going to help you with your marketing. That is very important. Um, without that, it kind of becomes really difficult. It will not happen like that. I promise you, you cannot just have a website and not be known. And then you just start making millions unless you've done something that is never been invented before, which nothing under the sun has. Um, or if you're a celebrity, of course you can have a website today and tomorrow and you can sell out. But if you're not known, there's 7 billion people in the world. Um, who are you? So always remember, remember that. And I'll tell you people, you know, just to push more validation on what you said, I represent people who, you know, some folks can be seen as a celebrity because when we go out, they're recognized from here to Ethiopia and, you know, beyond. And even if you're a celebrity, you still have to push, you know, your mm -hmm. stuff. There's so many A-list celebrities who have books that have never even been heard of um, just because you put it out, unless you have a scandal and people want to get messy. You know? Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. That's the fastest way of getting followers. Just do something outrageous and silly. And yeah, you will have all of that. But I unfortunately would rather just work hard. <laughs> when we to get there no definitely I, I i get it i get it it's sometimes not worth the mess unless you want to be a no. Kardashian, um and it may or may not work out what do you think you know the process of having something made you don't know this but africa is i love talking about africa i have multiple investments on the continent. My wife is from Cameroon. And so my bloodline, I know also it goes from Cameroon, Nigeria, Mali, and beyond. I love Africa, take my clients there, do everything that I can, angel invest. But a lot of black people globally, we don't make, we purchase, we consume, we will, you know, we don't make from scratch. So the fact that you're making this, I really want to get into, is this something that, hey, I'm the designer of this? Or are you white labeling it? And what has the process and how expensive has it been to actually make something? Okay, so absolutely no white labeling. Um, I think that's another reason why it's taking me so long to get to where I am. Um, like I explained earlier, if you've never gone to school to learn the technicalities that go on behind doing making a bra. Yeah, it, it's expensive because you need to get the people that do know and they will charge a fortune. A lot of people do white label. You buy, a, you know, ready-made something, you put your label on it and that's it. But no, everything on, on my designs, it's all me. Even the print, um, if you look at the Miss Chi designs, the print of on there is actually tribal. It's actually tribal inspired, African inspired. There's a flame lily, which is our national flower. So I put that in there because I am Zimbabwean and I'm proudly Zimbabwean. So I have the national flower embedded in my lingerie. And then of course I've got the spear and the sword. Um, so it's, it's all, you know, it, it, it all ties in, it all ties in. And that has to be designed. I had to get that designed, get it printed. And I made sure I wanted it on silk because I really want to make sure that my stuff is quality. And then, yeah, um, just I've got a lovely little team um, that I work with not far from here. So they help me with my designs, help me with 
everything else just from beginning from my designs right up to the end so I was lucky that way you know just the universe seemed to just you know um come and work in my favor so that's where I am that's why and that's how I've done what I've done but everything is all me from scratch the only thing I can't do is actually sew so but other than that I do have a fantastic team that um helped me and and I'll even want to be you know go go deeper on that. Do you have it made in Europe, in the UK? Do you go to China, Vietnam, you know, India? W where do you prefer to go with your lot? Um, okay, so again, universe working in my favor. We the the, the team that I have is actually based in Mansfield, which is like literally thirty minutes away from me. So, and it's a team of ladies who were made redundant. I mean, the factories that they're working before. So I'm, I met them just as I was setting up their little company and I've been with them ever since. So everything is sourced locally. Um, the ladies are like local to me, 20, 30 miles away from me. And um, even the fabrics, I try and source them as local as possible. Sometimes I get the silks, maybe in London, but everything is within. Even the packaging, it's all made here in the UK. So everything from the packaging, the tissue, the labels, the sticker labels, the bra, everything is all made in England. Wow. Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna flip it and go dragon's den on you and I'm gonna act like I'm Peter or something. And I'm going to <laughs> Oh he's my favorite. <laughs> and I'm going to ask, I watch all of them from Kenya to Shark Tank to the ones in Canada. I, I love all uh, anything talking business um, <laughs> for someone who doesn't watch TV. But, you know, I, I don't have cable or anything like that. So ah. Internet is, is, is everything. But with it being made in the UK, which is great that you're able to do that and have eyes on it. Um, have you ever, you know, considered taking it to those developing countries so it could be cheaper? And why did you consider it but not do it? Or are you still considering it? Um, the only place I'll have them made besides England is my country, Zimbabwe. I would eventually at some point want to have my designs made in Zimbabwe, designed by Zimbabwe, made in Zimbabwe, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I don't wanna take it anywhere else just because I can, I can monitor the quality if it's here. So when they make a garment, I literally go and I sit down and I inspect it and I can be like, oh, honey, you, you know, I don't like the way this is stitched. Could you, could you redo it again? Or, you know, so I'm very fussy about the quality. Um, if I'm gonna come in and say I'm, offering a luxury, a luxury product. It, it has to look luxury from, from the inside out. So, and the only way I can do this is if it's close to me. But other than that, I would love to take it to Zimbabwe because then that's helping the economy, but that's gonna be a very long process and that will take time. But yeah, th those are the only two places I would ever um, have my products made. Okay. You, and, you know, I, I know sometimes people say it's so hard to run a business from abroad in Africa because you have to have so many moving pieces, but it's not just the Africa thing. It's anywhere you go. I, mm -hmm. I always tell people, but, you know, to have it made in Zimbabwe, and I always have a joke about Zimbabwe, Zim, Zimbabwe, the place where a billion dollars won't get you much. Um, or you know, <laughs> Bobby and dollars won't get you. Ouch! Ouch! <laughs> yeah. Ouch! That's not, that's my country, man. You know, no, I, I, I love it. It's, I, it's true. I'm not saying it's a bad thing because I've had a billion Zimbabwe dollars and I'm like, what can I get with this? And they're like, maybe a Coke. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> this is many years ago, back when Bob was in control. Uh, yeah. But, um, that, that's great. I, I love to hear that. Now, you're doing it in the UK and you're doing it, you know, for what it looks like curvy women. And of course, I'm going to say black women because going through your website, I mean, the women look like you. And at one time I said, is this a model who has now become a, you know, designer because of some of the models and the posting? What 
are, is the American audience, is the Australian audience, is the African audience, are they able to purchase this easily? Are they going to really have to be hit over the head hard with shipping? Um, I, I've tried to sort of take some of the uh, cost of the shipping. It is quite expensive, especially now as well. Um, with the U.S., um, we use Royal Mail. Um, that's the cheapest uh, way of sending stuff here. And I think they've increased it by like almost 50%. Um, so I've tried to absorb some of the cost for that, um, for international, because I do want to cater for everybody around the world. So I suppose eventually with time, you know, when I become more established, I can then offer free shipping. But unfortunately, at the moment, I can only um, offer shipping, but I do take some of the cost. So I'm not, you know, giving it all to you. And, and what is, give an example of that cost, because I know on this side, to ship over to anywhere in Africa, I mean, even a little something, it's going to be hundreds of dollars. So what are you looking at? You know, if somebody says, look, I have, you know, a bra I want to buy, or does it make sense to, you know, buy 10 bras because the shipping is going to be so much? Okay, so what I've done is, if you are selling, if, if you're buying from here to the UK, no, to America, sorry, um, and you buy a set for about $200, no, 200 pounds, which is 200 and, what is 200 pounds in dollars? 240-ish, somewhere around there, dollars. Um, shipping will not cost you more than 15 pounds, which is about $20. So the more you buy, obviously, then, you know, the cheaper it becomes for you. Okay. The more, the more you buy. And, and what is, I, I think for the UK, I mean, to send something, it's about $26, which is actually good, like something small, flat. What, you know, if you can recall how much shipping like was, what, just because some folks won't even do the math, <laughs> they'll say, Wait, give us a price because we love it, but we don't want to go to the website and try to purchase something. And it costs me, you know, $300 to ship, which it won't be that much, people. Don't worry. No, no. So what, you want the price for here, for the UK or for America? From UK to America. From UK to America. So it depends. Um, so uh, if you buy a product for 200 pounds, that's a bra and a panty in the Miss Chi range. Mm -hmm. it will cost you 15 pounds to ship to America. Okay. So yeah, okay. it, calcu it calculates based on, you know, the day what um, yeah the ratings are for US dollars. So I would not know exactly what the day will be, the rate will be on the day, but it calculates for you, but it's roughly about 15 pounds, which is about $20 to ship to America. If you spend, yeah, uh, 200 pounds is about 230, $40. So in total, it should cost you about $250, $260 for Miss Chi set delivered. Awesome, awesome. Which isn't that bad, especially for curvy women, especially be, and, and being black owned, black ran, um, you know, that's not a bad price because I saw one um, brassiere and it looked like it was about 25 pounds which is, you know, a standard price for a quality brassiere. I know people are going to be like, one, how does he know the prices of bras? I have a wife um, and, I, <laughs> and I like to pick out what I like and what's comfortable. Um, that's the other part of that, guys. There's one thing that you like and then there's another thing what's comfortable. Um, yes. and, and you yes. have to, yeah. But so that's what I wanted. I wanted to make sure my products are, nice and comfortable um, because it's all well and nice it being all lacy and doesn't have the support that you have when you don't have the support it doesn't look good especially if you're a curvy woman trust me we have oh we need to be able to hide a few sins here and there just to make ourselves look better so i made sure that the garments are both pretty i'm using the finest fabrics that i can find and fit for purpose they fit well well, how does that work with ordering? I don't know if you're on Amazon um, yet or if in Africa, Jumia or any other platforms, but a lot of times, you know, it's I always here. It's hard to buy a bra online because you don't know how it's going to fit, you know, different sizes, different material. 
So how does that work when someone purchases something online, even in the UK or abroad, if they need a bigger size or a smaller size? So on my website, I've got like a, a table, a chart with different sizing and measurements on there in inches and in centimeters. So what I recommend and advise people to do is before you purchase, just measure yourself. Um, so my sizing might be different to another brand sizing. That's just how it is. Um, so before you purchase, just measure yourself. We will give you the closest, you know, um, to what's there. But sometimes you can never get it right anyway. And it's just, that's just unfortunately the reality of buying online. But if you measure it as we have explained you um, explained it to you, you should get the perfect fitting bra. And at the moment, uh, I'm not on Amazon. It's just um, on my website. I am looking at putting it on Amazon and Joomla, but that's, yeah, there's all so much to do. <laughs> there's all so much to do, but oh. I will get there. And is there a reason why, you know, are you having any issues with an Amazon? And I always say Jumia because that's the Amazon of Africa. And once an entrepreneur figures that part out, it, you know, it just opens you up to a whole world. And we never want to forget Africa. Here you are making beautiful African garments, panties. You guys should see the print. And, you know, then not to let Africans be able to have a reach to it or when many of the folks from the diaspora go to Africa and it's like, hold on, I want those because I know those. Even though, you know, in Africa, when we see things on the street, it's like, hey, give that to me. It's one pound, it's, you know, two pound at most. <laughs> but, but, yeah. but why haven't, you know, what has been an issue or why haven't you been on Amazon yet? Um, honestly, it's, I only launched um, this Miss Chi in March. Mm. So that's when just before COVID hit. So there's just a lot that has been going on and I wasn't too sure how the market would take it. And I didn't want to jump into Amazon first without having people trying my product and giving me good feedback and the reviews. Because when I'm putting things out there, I really want to make sure people like it and you know they're getting the most out of it so it's just something i just haven't had the chance to look into yet um but yeah i will and my range is only just expanded recently uh so when i launched i first launched with the miss chi which is only essentially three sets and i just thought you know okay i, I might not look like a serious business if i start going on amazon with like three sets so now that i've extended my range yes definitely is something i will be getting into very soon so look out for miss chi in the next month or so you'll find me okay and, and clothing is i know so difficult so i know it might have to start off regional because really to win on amazon you need to be amazon prime you need to be able yes. to have it be returned and that can yeah. get quite expensive you know, if you're doing it from abroad and like, how do I cut that cost or whatnot? And, you know, I love everything about, um, you know, the patterns. And I just, I just know that it can expand. The only thing that had me kind of like, I want to get this. I want to show my wife. But before I do that and think if it's comfortable, because I'm a pretty good judge of panties, right? But I okay. see the back on how it forms. And I wanna know if it cuts in or if it cuts from the side. And I did not see that from any of the pictures, even when going on the Instagram. So I'll give you, you know, cause I, the whole 360 view, because that, that makes a big difference. Again, mm -hmm. guys, when we buy underwear and, you know, brassieres, mm -hmm. we're like, ooh, that looks good from the front. And we might see some, you know, it could be a spike on the side of the panty that cuts into uh -huh. it and we're not even thinking about it. We're like, hey, but it looks good. You know, we're not thinking <laughs> to put these on over or something um, because these could be worn every day and it could be worn for those special times. So that was uh -huh. the only question I had because none of the models, you know, gave that 360, AKA thirst trap on, you know, social media <laughs> that gets all the looks. But yeah, I, I really okay. love it. Um, well, if you really have been following on Instagram, you will notice that we do show the back. So you'll find most of our models maybe will be, would have turned to the side because it also looks, 
it needs to look a bit sexy and attractive. So if they're turning to the side, you can pretty much see how the panty will fit at the back. But predominantly, they are sort of like French knickers, full knickers, um, but they cut in a bit cheeky as well at the back. But if you if you go on the Instagram, you'll be able to see it. A woman would know. A woman would be able to tell. Okay. And I bet a woman would be able to tell. Guys, you know, we, we got to see it. We're not as always okay. tuned. Okay. Um, and actually, okay. I, do, I see one. I see one now that um from from the back and it looks like it's a very comfortable fit so it's, it's ah, a, so you hadn't gone you hadn't gone on my instagram then had you no i didn't <laughs> scroll all the way down and um you know i didn't scroll all i gotta go all the way down <laughs> okay it, you're forgiven i forgive you yeah please forgive me um so <laughs> With, you know, with the lingerie, you have the bras, the panties, uh, the suspenders, which is quite old school. I'm like, whoa, I haven't seen those in a, in a while. Um, um, but that's sexy. It, it is sexy. I, I think it's sexy. And with the women with suspenders, if you've got like sort of like a big belly and you've had kids and you've got stretch marks, I think those are fantastic for hiding that. And you still look sexy and, you know, it shapes you up a little bit, I think. You know, you mentioned a, a word that I never understood why it was a big deal. Stretch marks. I'm kind of like the rapper Kendrick Lamar. Give me, don't give me something Photoshop. <laughs> yeah. with stretch marks. You know, I just want it uncut, especially if you've had children. Stretch marks okay. are Okay. If, if you are an athlete, if you're just a, a live, stretch marks are okay. You know, there's, I, I never, yeah. yeah. But for women, it's just, it's just women, we, it's our insecurities. We just feel insecure about that because, okay, we do go through the whole motherhood phase. When we were younger, everything was a bit firmer and a bit, you know, tighter. But after having kids, you, a lot of women do feel insecure. And so it doesn't matter how much self-confidence, motivation you give them, they just still feel that way. And if I can try and help you feel better about the way you look, um, then, you know, that's what I want to do. And if you're confident and happy with the way that you are, because I, I just believe every woman, no matter shape and size, is absolutely gorgeous. And if, if that's, you know, if I can make you, if you're comfortable with that, I've got the other range, which doesn't have the suspenders. So, you know, go on, girl. Look good. <laughs> no. Uh, go on, girl. <laughs> so will the, um, the line expand as far as, will it just say bras, panties, and suspenders? Could you see yourself doing, you know, um, pants, shirts? Or do you have, you know, other business ideas after you get this one established that you want to do? Um, no, I want to expand this one. I want to have pajamas, eventually do swimwear as well. Um, yeah, and just expand the range that I have right now as well in terms of, you know, um, the, the panties and the bras. You know, I, I want to give, because my size range is quite vast um, for a startup. I know, which is crazy. Um, starting from a 30 B, C to a 38 J, it's crazy so yeah i just want i just want to give more options and a variety of stuff i'm designing another print right now so you know new things will be coming up and then eventually get into nightwear swimwear and hey who knows who knows where the future will take me and will it do you always plan to keep it a women's line like victoria's secret or would you even expand to doing men i think i'll stick to what i understand which is um, women uh, for now. But, you know, having said that, I, I just don't know. Maybe something will come to mind and I think, oh, you know, I could design something different for men and, you know, I could have it. But at the moment, yeah, I think I'll just stick to <laughs> what I know, which is the women's life. For, for that entrepreneur listening who says, you know, I want to get into fashion, but I've been quoted, you know, the prices have gone to the hundreds of thousands to millions for me to do this right, which I can see how, but you have to start somewhere per product. And you talk about the different sizes. 
how much would you, you know, say a roundabout figure that it, what it costs? So you got one product, it costs, you know, maybe it costs you $5,000 to put together. Um, but then you got to have the different sizes. And anybody who's done dealt with sizes knows when you get into the larger sizes, it's, you know, a dollar or two dollars more if you're talking about t-shirts or something. So could you give a tip to, to just so arrange just so somebody can be inspired by that to say for every product I create, it costs me around this much. Um, okay, so when it comes to lingerie, it really doesn't make much of a difference whether you're a 30C cup or whether you're a 38J. Um, it's still going to be cut the same. It's still going to be made the same. So you, you find the prices, yeah, fair enough. You might use a little bit more fabric, but it's not really counted. So say, for example, if you, and it's different though. So I, I, if you want me to tell you about lingerie, I can only tell you about lingerie because I know it's different with clothes. It depends on where you're sourcing your, your products, um, where you're having it made. But for me, having made in England is quite expensive also because we use minimum, um, we've got minimum wage here. So it's not like a sweatshop shop whereby, you know, they can do work 12 hour shifts for $3. No, here, minimum wage, I think right now is about eight, nine pounds an hour. So, and that's just the minimum. So if you're now going to the specialists like bras, they're costing quite a bit per hour. So just think about that and think, okay, a garment, a panty on its own would take about 30, 45 minutes to make. And then you've got your fabric. So if you're buying pure silk, just and you're buying it from England, so they've put their um, markup on there. But I'd rather buy from England than buy from China because I'm trying to keep my carbon footprint low. So just think about what they'll charge per meter. And then you need about half a meter or so to make it. So yeah, it's, it's 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 yeah it's, it's it's not cheap not giving you prices and stuff but it's not cheap you don't make much of a product um a profit if you're doing high end if you're doing the cheaper ones then yeah because you're using whatever fabric you, you can get it doesn't matter but because i use high end and all sourced here it becomes quite expensive hence the price point okay so would you say would you i mean gosh when you say minimum wage my brain to calculate that high um, you know, would you say, you know, for like, if you add a new SKU, would you, would you say that maybe $2,500 just to kind of create, like, if you want to do a new panty, would it be? Um, high? yeah, $2,500. Yes. Hmm. That's conservative. I would say maybe about 3000 3000 3, Yeah, I'd say about 3000 Yeah. So, yeah, I'd say about 3000 and, and I love Just that. Just for one panty, one, one, one style. Yeah, I, I love yeah. that. Because with one idea that you have to spend about $3,000, um, her ideas, they're expensive, oh. They're expensive, <laughs> you know, but that, that is... A beautiful thing and you shouldn't run from expensive you should run to it actually because there's quality inexpensive um and and the fact that you're you know really pushed this and kicked it off during covid times how have you seen sales go do you know i was so nervous i just i wanted to uh oh, i wanted to break down and cry when we're told right the whole nation is going into lockdown and i'm thinking what i've just launched after seven years and then this happens but you know if your product is different is good you will still get people buying i was very nervous thinking oh okay um that's it because my price point for my miss g line is quite high but obviously there's some people that because of the climate they're not working anymore they're not in employment they're very uncertain times now so you know, people will not necessarily want to spend 130 pounds for a bra. That's why I then also introduced the Chi range, which is a, a bit more modest, modestly priced, but still fantastic quality. And 
that was amazing. So that is really kicking off and it's 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 doing better than I thought. Um yeah. Touch with stays like that. Well, if you ever, you know, want to look into the American market, um, you know, we love, we love, we love Amazon so much. We can't wait for drones to start flying product right, you know, to us. And we just take it, the drone fly off. Um, you know, I'd love to see numbers on whole, your wholesale numbers, uh, if that's available, because having your line on Amazon would be we're the only ones. And that's something that myself and people that I know, we always like to kind of research and say, could we make some money off of, it? you know, the, the markup okay. would, yeah, the markup would have to be, you know, it is what it is. But if you, yeah. you want this type of quality, you must pay for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, oh. I'd, lo I'd love to see that from you. Oh, fantastic. No problem. After this, we can have a discussion and yeah, we can, yeah, definitely. I'll be happy to show you. Hey. Yeah, that's an expensive discussion. So if, even if you have it on PDF, you send it to me. I stay yeah. over. I'll have okay. some, uh, some more of my smoothie over here. And um, yeah, <laughs> now with your, you know, your new success and the success that you're going to have, what mm -hmm. is a community give back that you are doing or that you want to do in the future? Oh, definitely. What I want to do is um, partner with schools. Um, I really want to feed the children school meals. I know there's one of our footballers here that's doing an amazing job um, trying to get the government to provide free school meals for children, especially now that we're going into lockdown again. Um, but, you know, something I also want to do locally, um, especially you know, the, the refugees and stuff, you know, it's, 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 it can't be easy coming to a country, um, not because you want to, but because you fear persecution from your country. And then you get here and, you know, they're always looked down upon and that always just, it doesn't, it doesn't sit well with me. So if I can help, you know, those children in the schools, then, ah, uh, yeah, that is my, that is my dream. I really want to help the children in the schools. Okay. I, you know what? I love when people say their community give back and they give back, but because hunger is something as an American, it bothers me because we're all so fat, um, you know, us <laughs> over here. And, and the UK, you guys aren't all the way there because you walk from, you know, pub to pub, chippy to chippy. But... Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, um. You know, do you have any ideas that the government is not doing to kind of help with that? Because it's one thing to give food, but it's another mm -hmm. thing to say, this is how we can, you know, feed you forever. This is how we can, you know, maybe schools learn how to grow their own food. And now we have fresh vegetables and different things, maybe even pigs and all that. I I'm not a pig either, but you know, are there any new ideas in that give back that you could? Okay, so um, a fantastic. You see, I okay, so in the, I don't know what, how it works there, but here in the supermarket, say you have got a piece of fish, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it expires today. It's probably fresh fish brought in today. You know, and they sell it for the day. At the end of the night, um. The fish might cost four, four pounds, okay? Just example, might cost four pounds. If you go to a supermarket like a, a Morrison's, a big supermarket like a Morrison's, just like a Walmart, I think, from where you where you live, um, at the end of the night, they go down to about 10p, um, 12p even, you know, really cheap. If they're not sold, they get thrown away. That food is thrown away and it's still fresh. And it's still good enough to, to stay for another day, to be cooked that day and to be served tomorrow or to be frozen on the day for tomorrow. The same thing with vegetables, the same thing with fruit. You know, um, I just think that is a total wastage of food. If, if we can, if the government can somehow, I don't know, send some, especially vegetables and fruits to the schools, you know, instead of throwing them away, 
And then the schools can always cook that food. Look, I'm happy to go to a school and, and cook and do some, uh, you know, jollof rice and or some, you know, potato soup or something. You're feeding the kids. You're not throwing things away in the bin because that stuff is really fresh and still still okay and would last you for a good week. I have bought some fruit, uh, some vegetables and fruit which have lasted another week in my fridge and they're still good. But just because maybe it doesn't look right or because the expiry date on the is saying, you know, the third, it has to go on the third, but it's still really good and fresh. I think that that could be an idea. So you and I, um, you're in my tribe and mm -hmm. you're in my tribe. If you ever read Seth Godwin's book about tribes, um, you'll get what I'm saying. If you, you probably already get it because um, I'm really thinking, I know I was cloned at one point as, you know, as a child. <laughs> And that is an idea we have presented to many local governments here. And even when I interned in the federal government, those were ideas. And they're always pushed back by people. Like people say, oh, that's a bee's knees of an idea, Kelly. But yeah. let me tell you, let me tell you where you, you know, you've cocked up, where, where you, you know, you know, really not seeing the picture. Because we would fund our food for parties at, in uni just mm -hmm. like that. We would go to what we would call like the Walmart. It was the only store like that at the time in our area in Louisiana. Okay. And we'd say, you're going to throw out that chicken. I got 50 mm -hmm. bucks. Give it all to me. So I can get 100, yeah. 200 bucks of chicken. But that's a yeah. deal just, you know, because one person is like, I'm going to throw this away. Why not give this to you? No problem. Yeah. And, and, and it all goes half off. They give me bags worth of food and I could feed yeah. celebrities or I could feed regular people just yeah. food. So I said, why can't we feed the homeless like this? The hungry, not even the homeless, even if you're just hungry. Yes. <laughs> it just makes sense. It makes sense. I don't, it's just, it. That's my thought exactly. It just doesn't make sense. Why would you do that? And I was thinking, you know, I had a conversation with my husband a few weeks ago, actually. And I was thinking, you know what? What if I went and I spoke to the manager of the um, supermarket and said, look, at the end of the night, if things are not bought, fine, I understand they'll try and sell. But if things are not bought, instead of you selling, I'll come and I'll pick them up. I'll cook something. And you know what? It usually happens at about half past eight in the evening. It's getting cold. I'd come home, do a soup or something and go outside and or have a kitchen and have people come and buy and eat. You're feeding people with very fresh food, very good tasting food that it doesn't need to be thrown away. It doesn't need to be thrown away. So, yeah, um, it's just it's crazy. This world is just crazy. Well, I don't know if you've heard the, ever heard any pushback on that. But what I've heard is, Kellen, if we do that, then the and, and I've also said we can give those companies, you know, even if it's um, Nando, you know, say something yeah. that I know is in, yeah. in the UK, we give them for the food that they, you know, give away uh, a tax yeah. credit. What what the bureaucrats always say is that means, you know, that company will just produce more food to get a big, bigger uh, tax credit. I said, no, because we could cap it at a certain price and we could say yeah. you can cook more food than you're yeah. already cooking with this deal. Or we could, you know, there's something. If, I said, if you give me two minutes, we can figure something to help that out. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But that's better mm -hmm. than doing nothing and letting people be hungry. Because when people are hungry, you know, if those folks were ever hungry, like we see in COVID times, there's some mm -hmm. people... In America, you guys got what eighty percent of your salary for those who weren't entrepreneurs. So it might have been different. But in COVID times, we had people who were making eighty thousand dollars standing in a food line. Oh, I and, saw that on TV. It was so sad. Yes, and so if we could even feed those people with food that's going to be wasted, they don't mind governments if those people dig in garbage cans for it but they won't just give it to them. And I know you have the British Red Cross out there, just like mm -hmm. we have the Red Cross here. Mm -hmm. Like those organizations get a lot of money and they could help out with gathering that food and putting it like in food, I call it cafes. You don't want to yeah. call it food banks because people say, I don't, I'm not hungry, I'm not homeless. No, yeah. 
cafe yeah. so put some dignity on it yeah. um, and, and make it very simple. So I love that that's your community give back for Miss T. And we really, really pray in Jesus Christ's name that this oh. company expands. Um, oh, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, there's so much I want to do. Um, give back to the world. Give back to people. I my my partner's always saying I'm a bit generous sometimes to a fault because I'm the kind of person who if I've literally got five pounds and somebody came to me and gave me you know uh, needed five pounds I would give you my last five pounds and then struggle on my own you know um but as long as I know you are okay I'm, I, I'm I feel better I feel better that I know I've managed to help you, but I'm strong enough. I can, I can struggle for a little bit. I'm strong. I can do this. So yeah, that I just, yeah. If God can just open doors and ways for me just to get this business to where I want to be. Yeah. You'll be hearing about me. Yes. You'll now you said, you said partner, is that as a spouse partner or as a business partner? Oh, spouse, spouse partner. Okay. We're, not, we're not married yet. So I, Technically, he's we live together, but we're not married, so he's not my husband, he's my partner. <laughs> okay, okay. I will, uh, you know, I understand sometimes marriage can take uh, a little bit with an African woman because you got to have your bride price ready. Um, yes, <laughs> <laughs> you know that well. Yes, <laughs> yes. And, and, and speaking of, you know, even um, business partners. You never mentioned anything, and I didn't read anything about, you know, an angel investor or any venture capital. So you funded this all yourself, correct? All myself. It was so hard. Um, the days, to be honest with you, the days when I stopped and I thought to myself, why am I doing this? If I could just stop now and the money that I want to invest or have invested, if I use that to do something else to go on holiday with the family or you know just splash out on silly things you know it might have made better sense but no because I feel like this is my calling for me to come back to it seven years later despite having done you know construction whatever else I've done no there's a reason why I'm doing this and a few days ago, I actually put, you know, like a little bio about myself in this African group. It's called Black Economy, Support Black Economy Business. First time I did this, um, and the the way people took to the story, to the brand, to the pictures, to everything, it was overwhelming. There's more people that need the product that I'm doing that, than I actually knew. You know, I, I know this. I knew there were people that were obviously going through the same thing that I was doing, but I just didn't realize just how many. So the response I got from that was just absolutely amazing. So, no, I, I this is what I have to do and I will see you through. Yes. And I'm glad that you found a tribe of, of people. And they're so, you know, it's all about finding our tribe. You don't have to have the most people to make the um, biggest impact but you have to find like-minded people. And us entrepreneurs all go through the same thing. Black entrepreneurs, it's even harder when you are in a, you know, you're, you're a minority where, where you're at, unless you're in a black country. But one thing I find a lot of us would rather struggle alone than finding people who may have been there for 15, 20 years. And of course I say that because I'm a consultant, right? And I get paid <laughs> very well to give those. But even it, you know, just anybody, you, you meet some, your next door neighbor. Okay, we do similar things. Let's talk mm -hmm. about those scenarios because if I've already made some money and you're trying to make, you know, your first 10,000, maybe there's mm -hmm. some tips I can give you and yes. you know, and then when you do make that 10,000, you can go to a consultant and say, hey, I need a little help. Um, <laughs> and you give some money to that person who gave you some tips because mm -hmm. the more you live, the more you give. I, money is the easiest thing to share. But um, yeah. I just, I love that. So you guys have gotten the game. Don't want to give you a game overload. And of course, you've already heard, we're going to take this offline so we can talk about some personal business. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Check out Chajeze, ah, Miss Cheese links.
in, <laughs> in the description box. Be blessed. Dang.